At 5.29 a.m. on July the 16th, 1945, the world changed forever, when the United States successfully and secretly detonated the first nuclear bomb in the New Mexico desert. Some people consider this test, codenamed Trinity, to be the start of the atomic age, a time where the future was all nuclear. Both sides of the Iron Curtain were quick to implement this revolutionary technology wherever they could, and this would lead to two of the most interesting tank designs ever thought up the Nuclear Proof Object 279, and the Nuclear Powered Chrysler TV-8. For the American people in the early 1950s, nuclear bombs were now a terrifying reality. But using atomic fission as a power source was positive and it was exciting. Nuclear power was within reach, and why stop there? There were already designs for atomic cars, aircraft, ships, missiles and submarines. And the military was, of course, very interested. The Air Force had begun work on a nuclear-powered aircraft as early as 1946, a project that would culminate in the Conveyor X-6, the Navy's first nuclear submarine put to sea in 1955. The Army was not going to be left out. American designers would soon attempt to put a nuclear reactor into a tank. The initial idea was for a dedicated reactor vehicle to power an entire convoy of electric AFVs, with these vehicles' turbines switching to petrol before entering combat. The aptly named Question Mark III conference in June 1954 suggested the first nuclear-powered tank, the TV-1. This vehicle would weigh over 70 tonnes and be armed with a 105mm gun, with 14 inches of armour and its nuclear fuel source giving 500 hours of operation before refuelling. The Question Mark IV conference the following year would use the newest technologies to create a lighter design, the R-32, weighing in at 50 tonnes and with a 90mm gun but offering 4,000 miles of range. These were obviously weird tanks, but this was nothing compared to what Chrysler were working on, the TV-8. The Chrysler TV-8 was unconventional to say the least. Almost the entire tank was placed inside the turret, including all four crew members and the power plant. The only aspects of the vehicle not rotating inside the turret were, naturally, the tracks, as well as the motors and the fuel tanks. Notice I said motors. The TV-8 was to be electrically driven. The V8 engine would be connected to an electric generator, providing power to the motors in the hull that would drive each of the tracks. The tank would be armed with a 90mm T208 gun, the same used on the T95 medium. This gun would be rigidly mounted within the pod-shaped turret, which would be elevated using hydraulic pistons. I'm not sure if this is technically an oscillating turret, but it shares many of the characteristics and drawbacks I went over in my last video. One drawback it does not share is the lack of NBC protection. The TV-8 was designed to operate during a nuclear war without any issues at all. The turret could be made completely airtight, and the crew operated the vehicle using closed circuit television cameras, shielding their eyes from any potential nuclear blast. The pod-shaped turret was even streamlined so the vehicle could resist the nuclear shockwave. This streamlined shape had other benefits as well, like being able to float. The outer shell of the vehicle's turret is just that, an outer shell. The inner armour is more conventional as you can see here. Straight lines and nice sharp angles made from thick steel armour. The outer shell though was relatively thin, but the gap between the pod and the armour was filled with air, meaning the 25 ton vehicle could float with ease like a big green balloon. This outer shell also provided protection, detonating shape charge warheads prematurely to protect those inside. But somehow, the crew were not the most critical piece of this vehicle. The first iteration of the design used a gasoline V8, yes, but the plan was to replace this with a compact nuclear reactor and generate power using that instead. The upside was that the vehicle would have incredible range, over 4,000 miles. This is thanks to the fact that nuclear fuel is so much more energy dense than petrol or diesel could ever be. In fact, one gram of uranium fuel has 100,000 times more energy than one gram of diesel. The cons, however, were pretty huge. The crew would be exposed to large amounts of radiation, meaning crews would have to operate on a rotating basis in an attempt to limit exposure. Additionally, if a TV-8 was destroyed, the reactor and its contents would be sprayed around the surrounding area making the zone around the vehicle like a mini Chernobyl. The army soon decided that nuclear powered tanks were, in fact, a silly idea, and admitted that they offered no discernible benefits over conventional vehicles while having more than their fair share of drawbacks. The entire program was cancelled in 1958, with only one wooden mock-up being built of TV-8. The Soviets went for a different tack entirely, committing to an incredibly heavy tank that would, essentially, be nuke-proof. The so-called Object 279 project started just as the TV-8 project ended, in the middle of 1956. The Cold War was heating up, and at this point nuclear combat almost looked inevitable. 
Soviet designers were planning a vehicle that would be able to emerge unfazed from a nuclear blast and fight through an extremely hostile nuclear wasteland to take their objectives. This meant two things. Firstly, it had to have incredible off-road capabilities. Secondly, it had to be shaped in such a way that the shockwave of a nuclear blast wouldn't simply flip the tank over or otherwise disable the vehicle. Object 279 attempted to solve both of these issues, and is still today probably the most bizarre design to see actual production. The vehicle was huge, weighing in at 60 metric tons and mounting a mammoth 130mm gun. A typical vehicle of this weight class would likely sink into the ground, but the 279 had a unique feature. It has four sets of tracks. The tracks are mounted in pairs, each pair being attached to a hollow rectangular beam which would then be filled with diesel to serve as fuel tanks. This quad track arrangement meant that the ground pressure of the vehicle was significantly less than its rivals and the 279 had excellent cross country performance with this immense 1000 horsepower engine allegedly powering the 60 ton behemoth to speeds exceeding 50 km per hour. Like the TV-8, the Object 279's armour is not all that it seems. The sharp point along the edge of the vehicle is thin steel, creating a void to protect against shaped charges while enhancing the aerodynamic effect of the armour beneath. The armour protection of this vehicle was incredible for the time period, with the cast turret offering over 320mm of steel on the front and 220mm on the sides. The hull was even more impressive, with the maximum frontal armour being 270mm not even taking into account the steep angles of the hull sides. The side armour of the vehicle reportedly varied from 100mm all the way up to 180mm. Nuke proof indeed. The vehicle was also equipped with a relatively modern NBC protection system, with an overpressured, air-conditioned crew compartment giving it the ability to operate in even the most hostile environments for extended periods of time. That is, if it was still operable. See, the Object 279 was absolutely riddled with reliability issues. The hydropneumatic suspension system would have been a problem if there were just two tracks, but this vehicle had four, doubling all of the maintenance required. It was fast in a straight line, but turning was an agonisingly slow process due to the track arrangement, and at 60 tonnes any sort of serious maintenance or repair was almost impossible in the field. In the end it suffered the same fate as the M103 and Conqueror, with the focus shifting to lighter, cheaper, medium or main battle tanks. Check out my M103 video if you want a more in-depth look at the fall of the heavy tank. It also didn't help that in 1960 the then Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev banned any vehicle from being over 37 tonnes in an effort to ease the strain on Soviet logistics. The project was then shelved, with one of the three completed prototypes surviving in Kabinka Tank Museum and the other two being scrapped. Object 279 could survive a nuclear blast, but clearly nothing can withstand bureaucracy. In the end, neither design would make it to full-scale production, both plagued by seemingly insolvable issues. No nuclear reactor was ever put into an armoured vehicle as per the TV-8 design, but the legacy of the vehicle did live on, with a rusted TV-8 somehow making it into the Marvel TV show Loki. You can see it lurking in the grass in a few different shots, inexplicably. A no vehicle since has had four tracks like the 279, or looked quite so much like a UFO. Two truly revolutionary designs, but maybe just a bit too revolutionary. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. It's an absolutely massive milestone and I obviously could not have done it without your support. It's so many supportive comments and so much positive feedback, both on the YouTube and the Discord, and I just appreciate it so much. But as always, like the video, subscribe, love you all, I'll see you in the next one.